advocate at BW for three short months. And um, in those three short months has already played a little bit of rugby on campus with our men's team. Um, but I'm super excited that uh, she's able to join us and talk a little bit about her expertise. She comes to us from Cleveland State University and then prior to that, Kent State University where she worked with student development and um, specifically um, diversity, um, inclusion and equity. So Dr. Rashid, welcome and thank you for joining us. Also, we Thanks. apologize for cutting into the Cleveland Browns game. <laughs> thank you, can you hear me? I am just yeah. wanna make sure, okay, great. So first I wanna say thank you, Christine, for the invite. I'm super excited to be here. I'm laughing because yes, I, um, even in three months almost, it'll be three months, September 1, people are picking up, then I am a huge Cleveland Browns fan, so I'll be quickly exiting to watch the game. <laughs> I'm usually not this casual, but I am on a Sunday casual. I'm over here with the friend and um, taking a break. They're like, go ahead, do what you have to do. We know what you do. So um, as Christine said, my name is Tamika Rashid. I serve as the Vice President for Student Affairs at Baldwin Wallace here in Northeast Ohio. It's really exciting for me to have an opportunity to speak to you all about two things I'm really passionate about, diversity and inclusion, as well as athletics. I think um, to know a little bit about me, I'm very transparent when I speak because I feel like it's important for you to know who you're talking to and who's talking to you. Um, I am originally from Northeast Ohio, born and raised on the Southeast side. I can't say enough, and I've said it in three short months that I had the opportunity to become reaching the pinnacle of my student affairs career in my hometown at a great university like Bob and Wallace. Um, I attended the College of Worcester, which is a small liberal arts in Worcester, Ohio, about an hour south. Um, I am a former track athlete a former um, shot put, but I am also, to know me, I am a football mom. I am a proud mom of two um, football players. My oldest son is a linebacker at the Air Force Academy out west in his third year, and my youngest son is starting his senior year at Shaker Heights, which is a suburb of Cleveland. Um, Christine asked me to present on one of my areas of passion. In my career, I began um, in diversity and inclusion and starting at Ohio State where I did my master's um, and continued to thread even throughout being a generalist. And what that means essentially in student affairs is I've had the opportunity to supervise all many co-curricular which include some of which I do at Baldwin Wallace, um, counseling, rec, student involvement, um, athletics, all of those things that make the co-curricular outside of classroom experience. But one of the things that I have been passionate about and have had the great opportunity to continue is the thread of diversity and inclusion and, that, and equity through all of that work. I want to start by saying, first and foremost, when you talk about recruitment and you talk about equity and inclusion, it should not be one person's job. It's not just the diversity person over in that department. It's not just the person of color. It's not just the person who is the diversity equity person in your particular athletic or missions area. Ac intentional, genuine, sincere diversity and inclusion is everyone's job, no matter where you are on the spectrum. So I wanted to take a couple minutes just to give you some things to think about. Hopefully you continue to have conversation on. I know many of you come from different universities, different backgrounds, but here are some things that I would encourage you to think about as I've been listening to when you talk about recruitment. First and foremost, I would tell you to step out. Step out um, and it gets a little uncomfortable. Many of us, given the state of where we are right now in our society, we talk about diversity and inclusion, we get uncomfortable, it's okay. The other piece that I will tell you remember, is that diversity doesn't just, isn't just based on race. Diversity is based on the differences in people's social, economic, sexual orientation, and religion and experiences. Diversity can be a first-gen student who's Caucasian from Appalachia to an African-American male student from the inner city. Diversity makes up very different fabrics and identities. So what I will tell you first and foremost when you're thinking about recruitment, don't be afraid to step up, step out, and be uncomfortable. It's easy to stay in our comfort zones. Two, 
I will say stay out and be consistent. Part of the active effort in recruiting, rather if you're in a fraternity or a sorority or rugby or soccer, is to stay out and be consistent in your efforts towards embracing diversity and equity. If that's something you truly want to do, if that's something you really are passionate about and something that you think will add value to your team, be consistent in that effort. Second, practice makes perfect. Ask people, do not be afraid to lean on those experts on your campus. It's okay, continue to make efforts. It goes beyond the involvement fairs. It goes beyond just the tables you set up. It also would include if you have in reaching out and being number four, connected and collaborating with other areas that are very diverse. So rather if it's your Latino society, rather if it's your basketball or volleyball, rather if it's your BSA, consider collaborating with other organizations that represent what you want in terms of diversity, in terms of making sure that people understand that your efforts are sincere and they will be consistent. Finally, I will tell you to be two more points. One, be honest. No one is an expert. Some people are more comfortable than others on that spectrum of diversity. It's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay to say, I don't understand where you're coming from. People who practice diversity and are experts respect more that you're honest and that you're genuine and want to versus saying you can't. And finally, I would say to you, meet people where they are. A lot of people don't know about rugby. Where they grew up, that wasn't such a, an opportunity or, or sport, but that doesn't mean they're not interested. Don't make assumptions based on who you know or see in your hall or where they come from or their background. Meet people where they are in terms of the opportunity for education. Some people may be a great catcher like me. As you see in that picture, I'm, I'm a catcher. I still have some ways to go in terms of understanding the game. I grew up in the inner city of Cleveland. Rugby was an option, but living and working in Shaker Heights lacrosse and other opportunities in athletics have been exposed to my sons, to myself. Meet people where they are because you never know that that may be something that they're generally interested in and something they really want to do. So those are a couple points that I would love to leave you all with. I'm happy to answer any questions. Christine has my contact information and happy to follow up if needed. Thank you, Dr. Rashid. Does anyone have any quick questions before she tries to catch Baker Mayfield on the field? Okay, well, we will let you go and I will let you know if there, anything comes up. Um, thank you again for joining us and go Browns. Go Browns. I'm sorry, everybody. I didn't mean to give you so much so fast, but I love talking about this and I'm happy to come back. Have a great rest of your meeting. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. She did uh, definitely put a lot of information in that short period of time. So um, hopefully everybody took a few notes and can use something from that. So we want to um, start off with just a basic, like, how do we sell rugby? Rugby. And um, one of the things that's really important when you're selling rugby is to tell your story, to be able to articulate what rugby is to you and to your team so that um, other people see it through your eyes, not just through a list of, hey, this is the sport and these are the rules, but the passion needs to come out when you're telling your story. The other part that you need to share when you're talking about rugby to, um, to new, new people that you're trying to recruit on campus is the transferable skills that you get from playing rugby. So things like problem solving, teamwork, active listening, um, trust in each other, trust in yourself, um, communication skills. Those are all positive things that you can talk about as you're tabling or talking to people in the dorms or across campus. That these are things that employers look for, right? These are job skills um, and good skills to have as you move through. Um, your life. And then also there's the bonus of the physical, the mental, and the social wellness you get from being a part of rugby. Um, and then the obvious that all of you get that others might not get and that family piece. 
So just want to throw that out there as we kind of move into our next slide, which we are going to have um, Angela and Jesse talk about what makes rugby different. Yeah, so uh, for, I'm Jesse Blitz, by the way, I'm the Women's Small College Commissioner for NCR. Christine mentioned at the beginning, but I'll reintroduce myself. Jesse, do this um, one and I'll do the next one so we're not talking over each other. Excellent, love it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I started playing rugby in college, um, and when I graduated, I decided that it's going to be a part of me forever. Um, and for, you know, some folks that are maybe further into their rugby careers, um, like you get that. <laughs> it makes sense. You never want rugby to leave your life. Um, and for people who are relatively newer, sometimes they have a hard time understanding that draw in. Um, so what makes rugby different? There's a place for every type of person on the field. Each position has such a specific role and a specific type of mind and body that goes with it, um, that no matter who you get that's interested, there's gonna be something that they're gonna thrive at. Um, there's gonna be a position that they're gonna play better in than others. Um, so that's amazing. It's really inclusive and it's really specialized. Um, strong team camaraderie, you know, Christine mentioned it, there is that family aspect, you know, it, when, you play sports that are maybe less contact, you can still get that family experience. But I personally think that, um, you know, the physicality certainly brings people together, especially on the team and your opponents. That's another thing that makes rugby special is that your opponents after the game, you shake hands and you're like, hey, let's go grab a pizza together. Like that was fun. I knocked you onto the ground and smushed your face in the dirt. Remember that? Um, so I think the physicality kind of brings opponents and teammates together as a whole. Um, I talked about, you know, for me, this is going to be a lifetime thing for me. I'm in it for life. Um, and there are ways to keep your we say boots on the ground so if you're if you're done playing you get injured or you just can't hang anymore whatever it is um you can still referee you can still coach you can still be organizers and administrators like myself smarto and christine um you know there are ways for you to stay involved for a long time if that's what you want which i would say most most people do um <laughs> And rugby is actually a lot safer to play. The last one, um, all capital letters. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it safe straight up, but it's a lot more. Um, there's a lot more strategy that goes into it. There's a lot more form that goes into it than a lot of people think. And so, when you're recruiting, that's definitely something that you want to put out there because when people imagine rugby they imagine all the big hit highlight reels right and they're like oh that looked like it hurt but what people need to understand is that there is actually a correct form to do all of those things and when you're learning how to play rugby you're not only learning how to hit people but you're learning how to hit people in a way that is not going to break them and is not going to break you but it's going to get the job done so um that's definitely i think a big one to hit on when you're recruiting new players is that it's not necessarily all blood and guts like you see sometimes. And, and I think that's helpful for um, especially younger, maybe smaller type people. Uh, I think that makes them have a bit more peace of mind about joining the game of rugby. Thank you, Jesse. And Smarto. So it's actually really awesome that Dr. Rashid said to meet people where they're at because this, we talked about what makes rugby different can be very attractive to people because it's new, but because it's new, that sometimes becomes a barrier for people to join because they think they don't know how to do it. Well, I don't, I didn't play rugby. So I don't, I'm not signing up with the rugby team because I didn't play in high school. Um, I was also recruited, uh, you know, I started playing rugby in college too. And I basically got recruited with, do you have cleats with you? Yeah, I brought my cleats. I don't know why, but I did in case I ended up playing sports. Okay, well, bring your cleats and come to this because I played other sports. So when you're talking to people, because you're going to, you know, when you're at your tables or you're recruiting on campus, or if you ever see someone in the gym who's doing squats for no reason, go talk to them. 
because those are the kinds of people you want on your team. And these are the kinds of things they're going to say is like, oh, no, 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 uh, I'm a cross country runner. I'm not going to, I don't play sports. Go, oh, so you're really fit and you have really great endurance. That's really great because you play rugby for 80 minutes or, um, you know, uh, I was, a you know, for on the men's side, there's usually more wrestlers in football, but I've had female wrestlers in football as well. Um, and those skills can't uh, transfer quite well, obviously. It's like, oh, well, you can kind of do that, but that's kind of illegal in rugby, you know, so you can tweak those things. But these are just some examples. Um, the hardest hit I ever got in my life is from like a 120 pound dance major that was on my team. And she absolutely laid me out. So when you're recruiting, um, you need to find all different types of athletes and all different kinds of people. So I just wanted to give you some examples here of specific things to say to people in specific sports. And you could probably come up with a lot of things uh, for other sports. I just kind of, you know, came up with six. Um, and that's why I, I put up this graphic. This is from Grace College. Grace College is in Indiana, the women's team. And this player, this whoever Lydia Staten is, is Lydia here? That would be hilarious. Is Lydia here? No, probably not. Um, but they recruited this player from high school and you can look my sports experience, soccer, basketball, and softball. We all got you all, everybody gets recruited at some point and nobody ever is like, man, I wish I waited five more years to keep, to start playing rugby. Once you get in, it's always, I wish I played sooner. I wish I knew about this sooner. I wish I had this opportunity sooner. So that's how you need to hook people and say, you know, to come give it a chance. So if people are nervous and timid that they feel like they don't know how to do it, this is how you can lure them in and say, and if some, I, every year I get somebody who said they've never played a sport before in their life. Happens every year. I never played a sport. I want to try this one. And all you do is say, great, we'll teach you everything. Right? So always just be, it's part of that inclusive and you might have to teach this. There might be some more basic athletics things that they're not exposed to, but that doesn't mean that they don't have potential. So these are just some different quips you can get people in and out. So that's what makes rugby the same and how your, you know, your language um, to be inclusive to anyone with any kind of background can be. I'm done, Christine. Thank you, Smarto. I think that's really important to think about our the way that we articulate that again, coming back to like how you're relating their experiences, meeting them where they are and getting them on your team. Um, so take out, if you have accessible to you right now, a paper and a pencil. Um, we're gonna make the first page in your playbook, if you will, for the 2021 fall season, 22 seasons. Um, so you're gonna draw a basic upright and label your um, the bottoms there with campus support or resources, community support, and then the top two sides of the upright, you can write physical recruitment and digital recruitment. And I like to think about things. Um, I'm an administrator. I'm not a, co a rugby coach and I did not play rugby. So I'm an administrator that oversees as a club sports director um, our multiple club sports, but specifically men's and women's rugby at Baldwin Wallace. And when we try to come up with ideas and think creatively, um, I think it's important to kind of like jot things down on paper and then look at where you can make those connections sort of happen. Um, so we're gonna use this throughout the rest of the, um, the evening here, the next 20 minutes or so that we have with you. So if you're able to do that, otherwise um, I did send everyone a copy of this in the email um, that came out at about 7.30 as well. Okay, so we're gonna go to Jesse. And she's going to talk about that first one, the digital recruitment. Yeah, thanks, Christine. So in addition to uh, helping Smarto out with the women's side at NCR, I'm also a part of the marketing team. So this is something that I deal with on a very regular basis is social media and digital, basically recruitment, trying to get followers, trying to get people to be on your team, right? Um, so um social media we'll start with social media um <laughs> we recently actually went and looked up all of the ncr clubs social media accounts 
Um, and this was incredibly tedious and difficult because so many clubs had pages from 2016, 2014, the 2012 alumni page, whatever it was. And so I highly encourage you that if your team has a social media account, you unless it's like the alumni account and there's people from whatever years, I highly suggest you delete every single account that your team has unless it's this year's account. So keep things up to date and current. That definitely helps people find you on the internet. Um, sometimes I've found myself doing this if I am like looking for a certain organization or company and I have to ask them a question and I'll use the Facebook Messenger and then I realize I messaged the wrong page because it's outdated. Um, so it's a lot easier for people to contact you and to find you if you delete all of your outdated social media accounts. So we'll start there. Um, and then I like that a lot of clubs have a fan page and then a page just for their team. So the team page can be posting tonight's practice got delayed because there was lightning outside. So meet us a half hour later at the campus rec fields or whatever. Um, or, you know, make sure you bring both sets of jerseys to tomorrow's game. We're meeting at the pitch at this time. Um, and then the one for the fans can be like, oh, meet our seniors. They're graduating this year. This is so-and-so. They are getting their bachelor's degree in neuroscience or whatever you happen to be studying. <laughs> um, I was not a neuroscience major. I just want to make that very clear. I did not study neuroscience. Um, so yes, there's all of that. And then as far as um, <laughs> there's a neuroscience major. Um, as far as trends on social media, so like I said, a lot of people do senior highlights. A lot of people say like meet our rookies, this and so and so. They just join the team, and I I like those a lot because everybody likes to be featured on somebody's social media page, right? Like when we when NCR features teams on our Facebook account or our Instagram account, um, or we retweet something from a team people get really excited and they share it with their friends and family and they're like, look, Ma, I made it. Um, so <laughs> it's always good to highlight your individual players. Um, I think that goes really far. Um, also, a lot of people show off any new kit or new equipment that they've got. That's also a really great way to get visibility online because you can tag your supplier. So NCR, we use Rhino, Rhino Rugby for everything. Um, so if you, you know, have new kit or a new scrum sled or something and you're really excited about it, tag for us Rhino Rugby because they're going to see that and they're going to love that you're using their products. Um, and everybody who sees Rhino Rugby's account can see what they're tagged in. So that brings a lot more eyes to your page. Um, I guess not necessarily recruitment, but definitely a good tool to use on social media. Um, and then that first bullet point up there says create FOMO, share all the fun. So that definitely goes a long way. I mean, especially in college, if somebody's, you know, sitting there at home and they're playing video games, they're like, oh, this is the fifth day in a row I've been playing video games. What am I going to do with myself? And then they go and they're scrolling through Instagram. And they're like, oh, the rugby team just went and got pizza like two blocks down from my dorm. That sounds awesome. You know, so creating FOMO, making sure everybody knows what you're doing and how exciting it is, that will definitely gain traction. Um, it'll appeal to a lot of different people. It'll bring people to you. And then lastly, um, on social media, videos get the most attention. Um, so the most likes, the most comments, the most shares are usually videos. So I suggest posting a lot of footage from you know practice footage whether you're conditioning or you're doing tackle practice or um you know your the backs are lined up and they're waiting for the forwards to finish their line out and somebody's you know doing a little dance by themselves and which happens a lot um you know videos like that gain a lot of traction and will be seen a lot um so i highly suggest doing things like that putting that kind of content on your page so those are social media trends. Um, QR codes are super handy. Um, I know at recruitment tables, a lot of teams will have a QR code that um, 
uh, newcomers can scan and then it'll bring them to a form and they can say name, email, phone number, and then they're signed up on the contact list for your team. So it makes everything really quick, easy, in a central location for you. Um, it does a lot of the organizing for you, so you don't have to, you know, keep a paper list of everybody's name, phone number, email, and then manually enter it every single time you want to send something out for information. Um, a QR code is a great way to centralize all of that. A QR code is also a great way to um, educate the folks that you're trying to bring on to your team. So if somebody's like, rugby, what's that all about? But there's 10 people at your table asking you that at the same time, you can say, hey, scan that QR code. It's going to tell you all about, you know, our team, who we are. Um, you know, our game schedule is on there. You can find out about what a scrum is if you want to put that on the pamphlet that the QR code leads to. Anything like that. Um, Christine, would you mind going back the slide? I'm oh, sorry. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> um so yes qr codes super easy to make also i'm pretty sure you can just google qr code generator and it's like the first link that pops up it's really easy to do um group messaging so that's the probably the best modern way to get information out to your team all at once um you know always add people who sign up at your club fair table or people that you find walking to class through the quad and you're like hey you thought about rugby and they're like oh sh sure maybe just add them to your group and then they can get all the information that they need that way and you can always if somebody decides not to stick with the team for whatever reason um you can always kick them out of the group message so it's not it's no harm the more people you add to the team message um like it says there helps with bonding with the team and organization um it's just a place where everybody can always be together um, and having a website. So I know that the Smartos team actually has done a lot of work with uh, their website um, or at least their conference um, has done a lot of work with their website. They set up a ton of fundraisers through their website and it's just a great place for people to go if they wanna, if they're like, oh yeah, when does the rugby team practice again? They can just, look up your website and then everything's all right there for them. Again, an easy way to centralize all your team's information. Um, so this also digital recruitment. So managing social media, managing a website, um, you know, creating a QR code or a group message. This can be a really good way to like add another team leadership position or another role for an individual on your team. If you, feel like you need more help or you want to be more inclusive or there's somebody who like really really from the bottom of their heart wants to do so much for the team but maybe they're not quite fit to like organize things this is a really good job for that person um, and it's a great way to bring on underclassmen as well you know usually the presidents or the captains whoever your leadership is are upperclassmen this would be a really great role for an underclassman um, and then they can have you know, pass on that knowledge as they get older. And it's a good way to just kind of keep the chain moving on your team. Thank you, Jesse. That's a good information. Um, Smarto is going to talk about physical recruitment. Yeah, so I saw uh, all over the internet for the last week is just pretty much every team in America with a table that looks just like this. So, so that's all great. So this is something that is, you're, that's really familiar. Um, one thing, one thing that's really important. Yes. Go to the student activities fair, but you know what? The student activities fair can be a little overwhelming, especially like freshmen and incoming students. They don't even know what they want and they're already kind of on information overload. So this table is great for that first catch, but you should probably be doing this all the time. You should probably do this in your cafeteria once a month, uh, at the hub, whatever your student union is, or, um, maybe in front of, uh, you know, if there's a big basketball game, you know, maybe put it where there's going to be a lot of students or some other kind of large campus event. Um, you need to make your present, you have to be recruiting all the time. If you stop recruiting after the first week of school, you're not, 
going to make it. You, recruiting is a constant effort. And that's what happens, right? So, oh, we got a bunch of signups in the first week, and then you kind of never make contact, and then it starts to dwindle, and then you get down to your list who actually wants to go. Well, what if you made a list of 20 students, you know, every three months, and you were catching five kids every three months throughout the school year? That's the difference between five kids in August and five kids in August, five kids in November, five kids in February, five kids in April, right? So these tables, putting them strategically, getting your name out and getting your visibility while actually on campus is a really important part of physical recruitment. Um, giveaways never hurt. Anything you can do to put your name, if you got extra t-shirts, you have old jerseys, anything that you can give away for fun, give it away, raffle it off. Um, Promotional items like pens or those like rubber bracelets, pop sockets, they're not very expensive. So if you spent maybe a hundred some bucks, you could probably get a thousand pens that say come play rugby with your team email on it. And you can put them all over the library and, or, you know, where, I don't know, wherever you study, if you're actually studying, who knows, but who doesn't need a free pen, right? Everybody doesn't need a free pen. Uh, oh yeah. Stickers are a great idea. Sticking, you know, um, putting, uh, you know, maybe I, th I think stickers and pens are really cheap. So it's probably a good way to go. Um, but putting your name out there and be constantly recruiting your round. So the big thing for me, especially, you know, we talked about maybe not everybody knows what rugby is. You have to be putting your name out there and have people thinking about it all the time. Um, I had a senior, so I met, a, I don't work on my campus. I'm coach, but I don't, I didn't go there and I didn't, and I don't work there. And I had a player walk by and I was talking to them. They're like, I had they're like, oh, I'm a senior. I had no idea we had a women's club. And I looked at my team and I was so mad at them. And I was like, we blew it. This person's been on campus for four years. and I have no idea we have a women's rugby team. So they're like, oh, I knew we had a men's team. I didn't know we had a women's team. So, um, the guy on here earlier who was talking about Missouri s and I know Baldwin Wallace does it. There's a lot of schools that are really good about it. And I'm not saying you to be friends with people you don't want to be friends with. Uh, but usually if you just recruit for people for rugby in general, they'll find the team they're supposed to be on, right? So if you're trying to raise rugby's visibility, the more people you have working together is easier. So if you have an amicable relationship if you have a men's and women's team, I would suggest working together. Um, so that's about, that's it for me. If you, we want to, so that's our physical and digital marketing. We kind of saw this as two pieces. Um, so then Christine, I think is going to talk more about the campus resources because this yes, is thanks. her expertise. Thank you, Smarto. So um, this might be an area that you're doing a little bit of, but could probably um, always increase. So really thinking about not just the uh, the campus recreation or student affairs that you fall under and connecting with them, but think it, think about it from the very top. So connecting with your administration, um, your VPs of um, academic affairs, your VPs of student affairs, um, all of those important people, make an appointment, go over to their office, don't take the whole team, but maybe just the exec board, um, I know on our campus, um, our guys played a little bit of catch with Dr. Rashid, who was on here. And um, uh, later in the week, our women taught our president um, what a lift was because he was very confused. And the next day, he called and asked me for the schedules. And he's never come to any rugby match on campus. So that was a great way to make that connection. Um, those are the people that can help make those decisions, right? Um, and then think about some departments that maybe you wouldn't necessarily reach out to. Um, or university relations, they typically are the ones that are writing stories um, that go out into the press. Um, the alumni engagement, community engagement, those are ways to get the word out. The more visibility, like Smarto said, the, um, the more you have um, the leverage to recruit. Other things to think about is utilizing students in different um, majors so possibly sports management or digital marketing um video production i know um, we use those students to create hype videos and they turn out awesome so ask ask make a lot of friends 
Um, also, student clubs, Dr. Rashid touched on doing some collaborative things with other clubs. Target some, some clubs that you can do something really creative and fun with. And not just collaborating, but also um, attending their events because then they'll return the favor and attend your events when you're trying to get fans in the stands. Um, so it's super important that we cover all of those different parts of campus resources. And as you're kind of going through this, like my little tree thing here, or um, mapping activity is super full. So hopefully you're filling that in. And if not, um, you hopefully can add more to it as you think about all these different things. Now we're gonna talk about community resources, um, ways to connect, engage, and grow through the rugby community. Um, so th thinking about making um, intentional relationships with your senior clubs, your referee societies, high schools and youth clubs that are in the area. Um, invite a senior club to campus. Have them come talk at a meeting and, and talk about rugby for life and, and what there is after college. And maybe they could be some extra bodies at practice one day when you're short. Um, we've invited at Baldwin Wallace um, a local referee to come talk about new rule changes. Sometimes your team gets tired of hearing from the exec board constantly having to tell all the things that you have to do or change. So bringing somebody else in and then you have that connection with them. Um, also finding some support in other ways like reaching out to businesses, reaching out to, um, you know, whether it's a t-shirt company, maybe they'll you know, put, if you put their name on the t-shirt, they might cut you a big deal or give you some free stuff. Um, I know Smarto's had some good luck with getting some free design stuff. Um, so really um, putting yourself out there and making those connections and think about it as uh, in ways that it doesn't always have to fall on the captains or the leadership board, the president and vice president and secretary. How can you delegate some of these things to other um, team members as you go through your seasons and develop these things because again these are transferable skills that are going to help you later on in life as well. Marto and Jesse do you have anything to add to that? Yeah I just wanted to say one thing so um, so I was somebody also like in my career I kind of focus on just college rugby now but I've worked you know I've had jobs and I've had different roles playing and administrating in other groups but what I will tell you as you are student leaders is like, this is your community. Like the people in this call, this is your community. So I know that sometimes it's like, uh, you know, that witch over at Ohio State, I'm not, but I'm picking on them because I went to Penn State and I know Ohio State's not on this call. So, you know, I you know, get frustrated of, you know, she punched me in the bottom of a ruck and blah, blah, blah. But then I saw on Instagram, they did this really cool thing. And I have, and I don't know how to do that. I watch you guys' Instagrams all the time. They're like, what's happening now is there's lots of cool videos and like little things that move that it's like, check out our schedule. And I like, honestly don't know how to do that. I am too old. And I don't think that's for me. But if I saw something that I liked, it would be just as easy for me to like, hey, how do you do that? I want to do that. Can you show me or can you tell me what to Google so I can go watch a YouTube video? Or if you see something on, you know, wherever, you should reach out to your conference commissioners, put them under some pressure to provide more structure and supports for you. Um, reach out to your commissioners, to us at NCR, put us under pressure to give you more stuff. That's what this entire series is because we know that a, a, a huge load of how college rugby works is mostly 20 somethings emailing each other at two in the morning. And I know that because that's how I started administrating rugby, right? It, not much has changed a lot in that way. So knowing who your community is, is really important. So if you don't know who to ask, if all else fails, you can ask the people in this group. And we are more than happy to help you do whatever you need to do. Unless you need like a really cool thing on the internet, I like, I will direct you to YouTube but other ideas I can help with. But, um, oh, we are like great. We're doing great on time. I'm proud of us. Can I just add one little thing on what Christine said about the last slide? Sure, um, since we so have so much time. Since we're so <laughs> she was talking management. about, you know, making connections with your high school and youth programs. 
Um, a lot of times club sports are required to do a certain amount of community service. And if you host a beginner's rugby skills clinic or camp for your local high school or youth programs, a lot of kids stay in state when they go to college, um, especially like the bigger state schools. Uh, so developing that relationship with the folks who are going to be looking to go to college in a few years, or I guess if it's a youth program, like 10 years, but, um, you know, developing that relationship with them earlier on, by the time they get around to looking at college campuses, they'll be like, oh, I remember I went to that rugby clinic at Baldwin Wallace and they have a really cool field and I, I want to I go tour that campus. I want to go check it out over there. Um, you know, so it's a, it's not only recruit for your team early on, but also for your school. I think the administrators will like that. Um, so that's a really cool tool, good idea. Um, if you, if your club sports department requires some type of community service, I highly suggest doing something like that. that thank you, Jesse. Um, so uh, thank you both and um, thank you all for being here. Um, we just want to um, close off by saying um, that we're giving you a little bit of homework. Um, one, you should fill these things in and um, try to brainstorm as much as you can. Take them back to your teams and work on it together. Um, and go ahead and create some content for us. Either share your ideas and tag us at NCR Proud or share a photo that you've got going on about recru recruitment or a video that you created in your next post um, and we're going to share that stuff away also keep in mind um, just like uh, Jesse said the and Angela or Smarto said this is um, this is your family too so um, we want to connect you and help build your networking so that you can share ideas with each other so um, we are, I am going to send a follow-up email, and if, if anyone does not want to be shared um, publicly, then I'll respect that, just let us know. But I'm going to share a, a follow-up email and just kind of get everybody connected. Um, we do have a couple more dates this semester, and um, you'll see some information coming out on those. On September 19th, we'll have a um, session on retention. And then on October 21st, 24th, sorry, we'll be talking about fundraising ideas. If anyone has any questions, um, feel free to stay on here and, and chat with, with us for a little bit. If you have to go, we respect your time. And he said we to keep it at 45 minutes and it's 844. Um, so do either of you wanna just say one last thing and then if anyone has questions, go ahead and stick around. Um, a few people were had some questions in the chat. Um, if anyone, if, if you do not feel, if you don't wanna turn your mic on or your camera on and if you don't wanna ask that way, but if you have a question, please just shout them out. We're still here. Uh, we have some time. Um, about I am we. I was recording this. I'm gonna actually just stop this now. But.